Over the next months, Clough will be bringing you expert series podcasts from some of the exciting technology projects we're engaging in and some of the new engineering that we're bringing to the world. Welcome to episode three of the Clough Expert Series podcast. I'm Gillian Formenton, and every month I'm bringing you experts from the Clough projects to talk about what we're up to. Today, I'm introducing you to Pranath Savaramuto, otherwise known as Sav. And Sav is a senior project engineer on, well, we've got upcoming another iconic road project. Um, but in a moment, I'll let Sav introduce himself, but he is a highly motivated and de dedicated project professional. He's worked in the civil construction and project management industry for 20 some years, and he's been here with Clough for 15 years. He's developed a large knowledge base of the energy, mining and infrastructure industries, and he's had the opportunity to manage teams through his career and enjoy the responsibility and the challenges that it presents. Welcome, Sav, to the podcast. Thank you, Gillian. <laughs> So I'm very interested in getting into some of what you've been up to with Clough Sav. I think um, you've you've got quite a, a wide range of um, different perspectives about what we've been up to here, and you had a chance to be on many many projects. So we're going to talk a bit about roads of the future today, um, which is a bit of an interesting topic. But would you just start by maybe introducing yourself a bit, maybe a bit about your family and your interests, and what has you been here at Clough? Sure. Well, as you mentioned, I'm Pranath Sabramoto. <laughs> otherwise known as SAV. Um, I've been at Clough 15 years. I've been in the industry 20 years. I was with uh, Tease and Henry Walker Elton previously. Um, proud dad of a 22 year old and a seven year old. And for Christmas, I've already got one grandchild and I'll be getting another grandchild. So really looking forward to that. Um, in terms of Clough, the, the diversity on my CV is basically a reflection of Clough. Uh, we're basically in a number of sectors and industry sectors. And, uh, you know, Clough has a mentality of all hands on deck. We help the team out and, you know, we deliver the job for clients. So that's basically our ethos from mm. a, from a on the floor perspective. Oh, brilliant. Okay, well, let's get into this topic. So we are going to talk a bit in a moment about roads of the future, which is, I think, a quite an exciting topic. And you're currently embarking on a large road modification project as the senior project engineer, which is, I think it's really exciting. So you're dealing with all the competing commitments and challenges that come with yet another Clough iconic road project. But let's talk about the future for a bit first. So Western Australia is now officially Australia's fastest growing state. I think it might have been for a little while now. Um, I think people want to come here even more now because we're safe in the current environment. Um, it's growing at more than twice the national growth rate, which is which is twice the rate of Victoria and almost three times that of New South Wales. So things are really happening here. So what do you think, as a, a, a project engineer working on road projects, as you have been for a while, what's your views with what we need to be doing with our roads and our road projects, given the extraordinary Rate, um, growth rate at the moment? So there's there's two uh, scenarios there. One in terms of technology, two in terms of sustainability. Um, mm. By combining that, then we're providing a, a package for the future. So addressing the first one in terms of technology, uh, leveraging off the internet of things, um, we're looking at smart freeways, which Main Roads is currently building or further developing their network with the uh, smart freeway so essentially that's to manage traffic uh, it's with uh, cameras it's with sensors it's basically communications um, run autonomously to say how do we further reduce congestion obviously we all know about congestion on our freeways um, and to a certain extent um, it is trying to reduce that so there's various uh, programs and algorithms that are currently working in the background to change their traffic lights on and off so you can enter the freeways on and off so that's the first component. That's what we're doing here and now in relation to roads of the future. And I've got to say, just interrupting there, I've lived south of the river in Perth for 25 years and been travelling on that freeway. And I've got to say, it seems smarter now they've done those changes. It well, really does make a difference to the 
the commute. Well, there's lots of lights now, so lots of lights has to mean that it's smarter um, and it's working in, in the right spirit. Um, in terms of the future and, and what really excites me is, is materials, it's technologies. Um, there are lots of fantastic studies going on in Europe right now, namely in Holland, about um, creating roads of the future, uh, energised roadways, so leveraging off solar power to energise the, um, the sustainable uh, future vehicles. So we're all looking at electric vehicles. Um, with electric vehicles, if we just charge them at home, uh, we, we don't get the, um, the distance we need to travel. So we've got to find out a way of how do we charge them on the road. So the ways we charge them on the road or, or potential ways is to put solar panels down. So there are a number of studies in Germany and in the Netherlands that are looking at putting solar panels in the road um, to charge up vehicles, uh, to charge up the traffic signals. Um, they're looking at integrating um, glow-in-the-dark uh, paint so you get a better uh, driver experience, sort of like if someone's seen Tron, you see all the lights lighting up as you uh, ride on the road. And that'd so, be great. Yeah, so there's, there's so many things happening. Um, and, I, and I'd suggest the progress in the next five to 10 years will absolutely surpass our, our development from sort of the 1912s to the 1950s. So that, that's how I think we're gonna progress in, in encompassing technology encompassing sustainability. Mm, very good. And there's a lot of um, infrastructure planning and uh, I know Western Australia is doing uh, massive projects to plan our um, transport corridors and, and all sorts of different things at the moment. So what do you think about the future of road transport and roads in general? What do you think we're going to be seeing? What's it going to look like? What's it going to look like? Um, I, I would suggest that what is the norm for us now may not necessarily be the norms for us in the next 20 years. Uh, we, we, we'd probably look at things such as segregation of heavy and light vehicles. We may see a move to, to light rail, maybe we may see a move to fast rail. Um, the roads will also be multi-user. So right now we have principal shared pathways that accompany most main roads projects. Uh, I would foresee a substantial growth in that area and that becomes, it's already a key aspect of um, road design, uh, but I would see it increase substantially. Okay, very good. More cyclists on the on the road, more, more cyclists to use our networks. Yeah, we've got to make sure that we keep them safe as well. So you want to have them separated. Yeah. And when we were talking the other day, we were talking about the, the young people in our lives. And I know my little grandkids, they like playing with their Tonka trucks. And, um, and I was actually wondering the other day, will my five-year-old grandson actually ever need to learn to drive? Do, do you think driving could be a skill that's going to become redundant in the years to come? Well, I hope not personally, because I always see the, uh, the license, the driver's license as a it's a rite of passage globally, not just in Australia. Um, kind of when, a coming of age, isn't that's it? That's right, and you, uh, your, you know, your freedom, uh, you, you get away, you go and see places where previously you're in the back seat of the car, now you're in the front seat. So I don't think um, driving or being a driver will be eliminated completely. Um, progression is, is a step-by-step -step progression. We will not move from uh, zero to 100 in terms of autonomy. We will require some form of driving. Uh, possibly not in my lifetime will I see no requirement for driver's license, but certainly what they do will, or what we do will diminish. Mm -hmm. So being you know, fully cognizant of what our surroundings are, making sure we're care at safe distance, safe speeds, I think some of those aspects will diminish. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually think too, I grew up in a country town and yeah, it was really the ticket to freedom because if you couldn't drive, you were stuck in the country town. Yeah. Um, I imagine that things would change more quickly, uh, maybe for city kids that could use like a public transport system, um, autonomous vehicles. I mean, already we see ride share. I use ride share a lot more than I ever use taxis, you know, in the years, in the years past. So it will be interesting to see what happens, won't it? Absolutely. And, and as we were talking about the internet of things and digitalization, uh, really, I guess we get more, um, I guess we, our imagination runs more right when we see more movies on and say, oh yeah, that 
potentially. So when I was growing up a long time ago, Jetsons were, were a big thing and, you know, their roads were up in the air. So who knows where that's going to take us? Yeah, I've been, I've been noticing apparently George Jetson should be being born around now. I think the I think it was I was at 2047 or 2050 or something was when the Jetsons were set. So, yeah, it'd be interesting. It wouldn't be good if you could talk to him and find out what he was thinking. I oh, know he's a cartoon character, but <laughs> yeah, that's it's fascinating. Oh, very good. All right. Well, let's have a little bit of a look about designing and constructing great roads now. Okay, because I'm very proud to be an engineer, and I know you're a very proud um, project engineer um, on some of. Um, plus, you know, fabulous projects. So what kinds of things do you have to consider in constructing a great road or a great road project? Because it's more than just a road, I know. So right off the bat, safety is paramount for mm. the motorists, for the road user, for the constructors. So from the starting of concept design, things such as vertical and horizontal curves, line of sight, speeds, um, traffic flow, they are integral parts of our design. How does the design interact with existing uh, networks? So that's from a design perspective. From a construction perspective, as we as touched on earlier, safety is paramount. We want all our people that attended work to go home to their families safe and sound. So there's a lot of planning that goes involved in how we keep our people safe. Um, one of the things we're doing on this current project where in our infancy, we've got our ground improvement team or the, the geotech team in place. We've put in to place traffic management to notify vehicles from two perspectives. One, to keep our people safe. Two, so that the motorists don't see, you know, random people on, on these areas and take their eye off uh, the road. So it, it goes both ways and we need to negotiate that. Oh, very good. And some people think of Clough in the context of complex energy projects, because we've worked on complex energy projects for over the 50 years. So how is that skill set applicable to road projects? Well, Clough is synonymous for working with complex projects in a number of sectors. If we look at infrastructure, um, everyone knows Clough's key part was the Narrows Bridge, but we also did the Mount Henry Bridge. We also worked on the Stirling Highway Bridge uh, we did the, the Canning Highway Brus Transit Way. We've done the Graham Farmer uh, Tunnel, and now we're embarking on a new project um, on the Mitchell uh, Freeway, um, which is also complex. So I guess complex projects is what we are known to pioneer in and what we're known to deliver in. Um, many of our clients are very happy with what we've taken on board and the final product that we've presented back. Very good. Yeah, it is. It's a very complex game, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, this this current project uh, for me is very complex. Uh, we the the temptation is to say it's an infrastructure project, and we're just doing another infrastructure project. But if we look from the ground up, we've got complex geotechnical um, conditions with peat, with working on a rubbish dump. If we look at um, existing networks, you know, we're planning to push two bridges or incrementally launch two bridges over a live freeway, live rail. So you think about the one of the segments having a, a nose piece to guide it being metal or steel and putting a, a massive uh, lightning rod over the top of a train tracks. How do we deal with that? How do we keep our people safe? So this project for me is one of the most complex projects I've worked on. Um, we have to be very respectful of this project because uh, if we take our eye off the ball, we will hurt people and we need to be on the front foot. So again, safety and our team and the way we design and construct is top shelf. Very good. And all with a, a relatively unknown, unknown future in mind as well. That's right. Yeah, That's how, how we adapt. What's our management of change? So if we do encounter certain things in the ground, which are potentially unforeseen, how do we adapt? How do we adapt so that we can still deliver on our schedule to our client? We can, and it's not only our client in main roads, but it's also the motorists. I think a lot of people in Perth have, have had the uh, continual upgrades to road networks, to rail networks, and I guess they're getting a little bit tired as am I in terms of traveling. And what we need to think about is how do we construct, and I wouldn't ever say eliminate, 
but I'd probably say mitigate the impact on on our, our stakeholders. Yeah, very well said. All right. Well, what would you say you're most proud of, of being uh, an engineer or particularly a senior project engineer now with Clough? What are you most proud of? I guess engineering, it's all about being tactile in, from a construction perspective. Um, you know, we for me, one of the jobs I worked on was on the Gorgon project. Um, whilst we're not allowed to travel and openly see the Gorgon project, I do see a number of uh, photos, aerial photos, and I see a look at the uh, permanent buildings, um, and that was an area that I looked after. We get to see, we get to touch, in, if you're not part of Gorgon, say if you built a, a bridge or a, a tower or a reservoir like we, we worked on in Kalgoorlie, you get to see, you get to touch, and you get to tell your future generations Whilst I didn't specifically build that, I was part of the team that put that together. And at Clough, we're very big on team and we're very big on um, doing those sorts of complex works. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Sav. It's been an absolute delight to talk to you. Um, I'm excited about the future of roads and I'm most excited that the integrity of our current projects is looked after by amazing engineers like yourself. Thank you, Gillian. appreciate your time. Thank you, Sav, and thank you for seeing the series out for the year. Next year, we're going to continue the series with more exciting and interesting topics. I'm looking forward to sharing some more of Clough's great pioneering stories with you.